Okay, so I'm going to uh, start surfacing this little part of the uh, mech leg. So I've already done my color blocking and so I'm going to have this uh, this is going to be, I call this the front toe. Okay, so I'm going to apply that and I'm going to go for a default of a matte paint and then I've got a it's going to be kind of a goldish color and then I can change it to standard and then I can see there's where I'm gonna start okay now I'm gonna be using a blend material and this bottom is the paint okay so the way you can think of it is the bottom is paint and it's white so whatever is white in my I'm going to do vertex painting wherever is white is going to be this this is going to be my metal surface and I think I'm going to do this one uh, maybe a rust so I'm going to say this is rust and this is black so wherever we are uh, using our vertex painting we're painting on here wherever it is black this will show and wherever is white this will show alrighty then alright for right now I'm just going to uh, this default let's go for as a matter of fact I'm going to go ahead and copy this gray let's go for um, we'll kind of go for this to be We'll start with a matte paint on that too. And I'm gonna go for an advanced and I'm gonna I'm gonna kick down the reflection to maybe about 5. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do is some vertex painting in here. Now I put up this little uh, image up here. This is where I was looking for and, and here I'm using a exposed metal in here and I'll play with some of that too. And these are different looks that I was getting based on what I was using to break this up. This is all vertex painting and that's what I'm fixing to show you how to do uh, to get this kind of a look. Now I also put up a graphic Oops. and this shows the process I'm fixing to show you too on what we're doing here. So this whole process that I'm fixing to demonstrate is what I did in this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is some vertex painting. That's a modifier that we're putting on here. So you just go down here, vertex paint, and you got a little painting utility in here. Now by default, we can't actually see the paint in here. You have to click. If you click this button right here, then it shows you um, the vertex channel okay by the way the vertex channel is mapping channel zero so in some of the stuff that you've been doing for me like you know that old wall we're using channel one channel two channel three zero is the industry standard for vertex channel 
If you click the second button, then you can still see the vertex channel, but you get some shading, which makes it easier to see what's going on. So by default, it fills it with white. Okay, so in other words, um, it's going to be, if I don't do anything else, it's going to be this color right here because this is the white part. So wherever, wherever it's white in here, it's going to show this. And wherever it's black, it's going to show this. Okay, let's go ahead and dial us a kind of a rust color into here just to have us something in there. So it's going to be this color with this as the, the rust for right now. Now later we'll come in and modify all this, but that's what it's going to start. So if I go in here right now under my render setup, and I'm going to do active shade, and I'm going to make my window not that big let's just say maybe 500 by 500 and we want that to be Arnold and then we render Maybe I need to get that a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it in the video a little bit bigger. Let's go for 800 by 800. Okay, that's better. And then I can go ahead and um, Let's go to my exposure control. And let's make it a little bit brighter for right now. Maybe something like that. And I want to make sure I go ahead and not use all of my brains okay so there's where we're starting all right so by default this blend is set to a mix amount of zero which is telling me it's the top if I make this at a hundred then it's giving me the bottom so this uh, blend mixes between these with a percent amount but then I can do a, a mask in here and that's what we're going to do so right off the bat just to kinda get things going I want to put and I'm gonna go with a cellular and put that in my mask here and then as soon as I do that you're gonna see that it's it's splitting between these okay so I'm gonna get my I'm gonna go for chips I'm gonna I'm gonna make this window smaller again just crunching too much. Let's go. Um, so this is kind of crunching my machine here. I'm going to go back to 500. And then I'm going to shift F and then just zoom in here better. Okay. So maybe that'll make me a little bit more responsive. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So now uh, this is getting kind of what I want, but the size is too big. Okay. So I need to bring this down in size. Let's go for like maybe 
five. Maybe I think let's I'm also going to turn on this fractal. And maybe we'll go for that for right now. All right, so now we're ready to start doing our vertex painting. So I'm going to go uh, with black. So I'm clicking on my paintbrush here. Now, by default, it's going to be really big. Here's your size of your brush. Okay. And then I'm going to start painting along this edge. Now you'll see in the rendering it's not doing anything. And that's because I haven't told the shader to read that yet. So what I do is I come here and I'm going to get a map, a general map, and I'm going to get vertex color. So the vertex color tells it to read the color channel. And we want it to go into the black channel. So we're going to go right here. And actually, I think. Come on. OK, and so one of the things that I like to do is back on my. vertex paint I like to hit this button down here to blur all which will just blur my entire selection there kind of softens the edge a little bit and then I can come back and then I can paint some black back on top of there to kind of pop that And then other things I can do is like I can come back in here and switch to a white. All right, I'm going to switch from this uh, active shade because it's just slowing me down too much. Let's get a regular render window up here. And I'm going to do region renders to speed it up even more. Okay, like there. Okay, so then I can come back and paint with white. And then I can kind of break that up even more. All right, now the trick that's going to really pop this is adding some bump to it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this cellular and I've got the vertex color in division one and two. So it's plugged into both of these. Okay, so it's these against the white. All right, so I'm going to plug this into the bump on the paint and I'm going to kick this up kind of high like six so we can kind of see how that's going to start giving us a bump and this is going to really start breaking this up like the paints being broke up and then what we're going to want to do is to clamp this so in this cellular, it does have an output node. So we want to go down here and enable this. And I'd already been playing with this. Let's kind of get rid of these. OK, so you're going to put two points. And you're going to drag this down. And you're going to drag this up. And that's going to solidify this a little bit. Now, the mistake that a lot of people make is um, getting this right on top. 
Okay, so they put this right on top, which gives a nice hard edge, but then you can't get any bump because it's right underneath it. So you always want it to be at an angle, which will increase the depth of the bump. Matter of fact, let me see, let's get closer. Yeah, so now we can see better. Okay, the other thing I want to do is I want to put this bump onto the uh, into the metal or rust, whatever this is going to end up being. I'm going to kick this up too, and then that's going to help increase that too, where it's starting to break up. Now the other kind of little trick is we can go outside of range. So in other words, on our clamp, if we start pulling up and pulling this down so it's kind of outside of its normal range, then that will start giving me some where it's breaking up outside of that before it gets in there. And I think what I might want to be doing is on this one, make this a minus. And then it's going to set that down in there. And I may also decide that I may want this to be a little bit smaller. Let's go back to our cellular. What do I got it set at? Five. Let's go to. Oh, 3.6 and look at that and then that'll give me a little bit more break up in there and that's starting to look pretty good so let's zoom back a little bit and now we're getting some nice break up on this surface okay so now I've got a pretty nice look that I'm I'm liking so now what I'm gonna have to do is decide how much do I want that to be showing up in there okay how much of the of the metal do I want to show and that is controlled by this okay so the yellow is white and the metal is black. So if I want more wet black, and I'm going to constrain this to just move to the side so I'm not changing my curve. Now, so now that's going to give me more of the black in there. So I just have to kind of determine at any given time how much I want and then once I get the look that I'm wanting and it's looking pretty good now I'm ready to start doing more painting in here so now I can come back and I'm gonna change this back to black and I'm gonna say well okay I want some down in here and I think I'm gonna go a little bit bigger with my brush here now by the way a lot of people don't understand this but where you're gonna have the most breakup is in the edges and corners then out in the middle okay so I may do something like that maybe a drift in there to break it up then I'm gonna want to blur that and then come back on top add a little bit more on there and then let's see what we've got. Just gotta frame this a little bit better. And, and now we're getting a nice kind of breakup. 
I don't want it to feel too stripey like it's a stripe. And so I may decide to come back with white. You can also paint with gray in here as well. And I'm going to break that up a little bit right there. It's too much of a stripe. And I may want to break this up a little bit there. That's better. Okay, so we're starting to get a nice look in there. And then we're going to want to do some staining also. Okay, let's play with that. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to my shaders now, and I'm gonna start manipulating on my paint. So on the base color here, I'm going to add a composite node so I can stack things on top of this. And, by, and in my first layer, I'm going to put a color uh, I could do a color map or it could be a color correction node, either one. So I want to go over here and copy this uh, yellow and I need to put it in here and this gamma needs to be one and now it'll be back to what it was. Okay, but now I can add things onto it. So I can add another layer on here. I'm going to go in here and get a bitmap and let's go with let's see I've got a stain bitmap here looks like this and I'm going to put that on it and right now then that's going to and right now I'm gonna make this easier I'm gonna apply this directly to it so I'm not dealing with the um, the other stuff that's on there alright so now I need to put a mapping coordinate on this so I'm going to put a UVW map so by default, it's going to give me all this kind of stuff. Okay. So it needs to be a box map. And so it's shooting at, from all different angles, but you'll see you're going to get the seam here. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is do what's called a blended box map. So this is a modifier. Blended box map. And basically what this is going to do, what a blended box map is wherever this seam is, it's going to put a gradient in there. So what I'm going to be able to do is like so and then I'm going to put this in one two and three now you have six channels so that's uh, top bottom left right forward uh, and backwards but I only really need three because I need to blend the top and the bottom to the left and the right to the uh, front and back and now it's going to get rid of that seam because it's going to blend them together Okay, so now I'm creating some nice uh, seams in there, you know, and I can do, I can move things around if I don't like where it's at. Right now, I think I like where it's at just fine. But you can always come in here and uh, you can offset your bitmap. So you can go in here on your bitmap and you can do an offset where I'm moving it from left to right or I'm moving it forward and backwards and that's sliding your bitmap around and I don't like that now 
one of the other things is, is that I'm not doing here, which I probably should have, I'm not using a titleable bitmap. And if I used a titleable bitmap, then I wouldn't have a problem with some of this. But right now, I'm just showing you the principle behind it. You guys are generating some titleable bitmaps that you should be using. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now what I'm wanting is to figure out how I want to blend this in here. Okay, initially I'm going to try multiply. And now that's going to lay that dirt back on top of my uh, paint. And then I'm going to turn this down. I want it more subtle because I'm going to stack a couple of them up in here. I probably want it a little bit stronger than that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, let's stack another one on here. Okay, so for right now, that's gonna be, it's gonna stomp over the top of it. I kind of like that. So I have to do some kind of a blending mode on top of that one. Let's go for let's try the color dodge. that all right so we can go back and apply this back to it now pretty good now let's see about getting us uh, some rust into that area in there okay so to get the rust happening I'm going to just go ahead and apply this to it right now so I'm only dealing with the rust and then we're basically going to be building something like this so I can hold down my shift key and just clone this node since I've already built this node structure and plug this in and then I am going to copy that color this will be my base color here and then I'm going to initially let's go ahead and turn off this layer so then this layer we're going to go get our so there it is all right so let's enter that and I'm going to want that scale coming way down. Okay, so I want to take um, this rust texture down a little bit. I think it's too big. And by default, it's still using map channel 1. And I don't want to mess with map channel 1 because that's controlling my uh, stain on the paint. So let's rename this. This is UVW. This is paint. This is the paint stain. It's on channel one. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it back on. And this one will be the rust. And it's going to be on two. Exist to two, 
and then we need to change this to two okay so now I can come in here and I can scale this down so that this rust pattern is get a little bit smaller let's go maybe a little bit smaller than that and I think even a little bit smaller okay that's looking pretty good and then I think I'm not gonna do the blended box map on it because we would never even see any seams if it had seams because it's going to be so small in there so I'm not going to worry about the seams okay so that's pretty orange so let's go in here and we're going to tell this to multiply turn it down a little bit to an average on it yeah I like that better so okay that looks pretty good so let's go back put our shader back on it yeah I think I want that darker it's too light it's too light so I need to make this darker maybe just a little darker yeah I like that better Okay, that's looking pretty good. So there is a basis to um, what my yellow parts to my uh, little mech leg are going to look like. And I think I might want to come back and put some uh, lettering on this. Let's see about that. So I think what I want to do is let's put a scan code on this. So got a little scan code here. We're going to put this on map channel 3. And let's save this viewport so we can come back to it. So save the active viewport. 
and then I think I'm gonna put it on the side so what do we got here left side okay so I need a UVW map I need it planar from this side I need to do a bitmap fit pick the scan code so it'll be that proportion and then I'm gonna scale it down and that needs to be three and I can't see it anymore so I want to move the gizmo out to the side doesn't matter where it's uh, at the size that the code will be if I want to see it on there I'm just going to use this on there right now base color and then I need to make sure this doesn't tile and then I can scale this some more may decide I want to rotate it maybe something like that okay and it's going to be on the paint so let's make a layer this is going to be on the paint and to make life easier right now I'm just going to put the paint on it and let's see what we got oops I'm a little close and oh I know what's going on I've got to I'm going to put another composite in here. Maps, general composites. And I don't want it going through the blended box map. So we want to lay it on top. Okay, and I think I don't like it rotated. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, then I need to break that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. Let's make another layer. And this needs to be RGB color and another layer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go over and get something to use as a mask so let's go okay so what I'm gonna do is I have a little thing that I like to do which is to use an old tree as a way to block things to break things up so I'm going to auto contrast this and I'm going to add my own levels to it I need the whites to be punched out and the black 
blacks to be black and the whites to be white. Okay, that'll work. Control A, Control Shift C, and then paste it over here. Okay, so I can scale this up. Maybe something like this. And I don't know, do I want that inverted? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. The white's going to be opaque and the black's going to be transparent. So we're going to kick out more white. As a matter of fact, I think what we ought to do here is to blur this. So let's go get a blur and then a Gaussian blur. And let's blur it. Maybe something like that. Okay, so now let's come in here with our levels. And then we need to get these really close together so they're nice and sharp. Something like that. Need to dump the color out of this. It's got color in it. There we go. And that's going to be our mask. All right, so let's save this out. Save as, and this is gonna be our scan code mask. And then that's going to break it up. And we need to dirty it up too so let's go ahead and let's add another layer in here and let's go ahead and just use one of these dirt maps from over here got here let me switch into perspective that's driving me up the wall that's an orthographic okay and that'll dirty that up some okay that's looking pretty good So I may decide maybe I want to dirty it up a little bit more. So I can do the same thing here. Let's just add this one on top of it too. And this was...
and then I want to go ahead and mask that layer too and make sure I turn it down some okay that looks pretty dirty I think I want this edge to be ripped here let's go back let's see what we got so that should be top and let's just paint Okay, I see what's going on is the mapping coordinate is flipped backwards. That's what's going on. So I need to put some black in this corner. Okay, that looks like it's pretty been dinged up. Okay, so let's just put our... All right, so back here. And this is all back. It's not dark enough. It's too light. What if I put a color correction node in here? That's 
better. Way too saturated though. Let's turn that saturation down. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And let's go. All right, so I need to put some dinged up on the other side too. So this is looking pretty nice. So let's go back to our vertex paint. And by the way, just so you're aware, we can actually embed this vertex paint in. So if I right, went right here and said collapse two, it's embedded that in there, okay? I can always come back on and put it back on top and then it's gonna take me right back to where I was before. Shouldn't matter where it is. Huh, why am I not showing me my vertex paint? Okay, I'm going to object properties. Let's see, vertex color. It's on there. Wonder why it's showing me that brown in there instead of white. And then I can start getting the other side. We don't want it too stripy. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's let's get a big render going here and I'm gonna pause it while I render it. Okay, and so there's the final final uh, render. Uh may not be finished with this piece, but it's a good start. And uh, hopefully that you uh, kind of learn some techniques there that you can use uh, with uh, surfacing your piece. All right. Hope this helped you. Thank you.